Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. We begin tonight with breaking news. A body was pulled from the Red River near downtown Moorhead. Good evening, everyone. Rescue crews responded shortly after 6.30 to a report of a body floating in the water face down. The body was said to be in the area of Memorial Park, north of the railroad tracks. It only took a few minutes to find the body, which authorities say is female. An officer on the scene told us that there were no prior missing person reports and that they have not yet identified the woman. Stick with Valley News Live and ValleyNewsLive.com for updates on this breaking story. North Dakota Supreme Court says campus police have limits. The ruling stems from an NDSU police officer who made a DUI arrest last year off campus. Valley News Team's Krista Baim explains how this ruling could impact campuses involved in other cases. Please. Mark Freeze is the defense attorney for a woman arrested last year for DUI by an NDSU police officer several blocks off campus. A situation agreed to between campus police and the city of Fargo, giving campus officers full jurisdiction on and off campus. The North Dakota's Supreme Court reversed the DUI conviction and limited campus authority. So that if a college student gets home from work late at two o'clock in the morning and walks across a desolate campus from an isolated parking lot to a dormitory, uh, there'll be a campus policeman nearby instead of having them blocks away uh, conducting patrols in residential areas. Early response from Fargo police indicates that the high court ruling will not have a huge impact on patrols in the NDSU area. An NDSU spokesperson told me the school was waiting for guidance. The university system issued a statement which in part says we will consult with the attorney general's office to determine what legal options are available to provide the best possible security to each campus. But we wanted to know if this ruling would have any impact on other cases, including the high profile death of NDSCS student Andrew Sadik. An investigation that has, at some points, been led by the campus police. But once that investigation evolves beyond campus and into activities occurring off campus, it's no longer within the purview of NDSCS police. It needs to go to either the Bureau of Criminal Investigation, which is a statewide agency, or to the county sheriff in Richland County. But Freeze adds that the Supreme Court ruling shouldn't impact cases that have already been closed. Krista Baim, Valley News Live. Now, in the ruling, campus police would be allowed to pursue criminal activity if it begins on campus. Two men are in jail tonight following an attempted robbery, armed robbery, a shooting and a chase in Moorhead. Police have released a photo of 27-year-old Alfred Lamar and we're still processing 25-year-old Lawrence Leslie Jr. into the Clay County Jail. Authorities were also talking with two others. Investigators say one gunshot was fired during the suspected robbery just outside an apartment building in the Romkey Park area around 1.30 this afternoon. One person was injured from being pistol whipped. The victim was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries and police say he is not cooperating with investigators. Two guns were recovered and a vehicle was impounded for evidence. Lamar and Leslie took off and were later arrested. The nearby Moorhead Pool in Romkey Park was placed on lockdown as an, and a number of daycare children were there swimming at the time. A place for Hope Recovery and Wellness Center went into lockdown as well today. It's four blocks from today's scene. Minutes after going into lockdown, an unfamiliar man showed up and tried to get into the building. He was one of the men wanted by police. Took it really well. He kind of waved to us to let him in. We do have a glass window and I kind of did this number to him and he waved us off and he stayed in the inside entryway, the foyer of the building. Um, I think he thought that he wouldn't be identified or seen here if the patrolman were to pass by. So I, I knew that I needed to notify dispatch. That Clark did in fact call police who quickly showed up and made the arrest. If you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline 701-237-6576. Do so and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case. The bird flu has killed more than 48 million chickens and turkeys in the U.S. since December of last year. And some ag experts fear that the virus could get worse. The poultry industry is making and facing a major crisis with the outbreak of highly pathogenic avian flu or HPAI. The current bird flu strand killing millions of birds. 
The Senate Ag Committee met today to talk about what the next steps are to fight this bird flu. The USDA has confirmed that HPAI in 21 states has been there since December of 2014 in response to this growing problem. The USDA is detecting the HPAI in birds as quickly as possible and killing them off before the virus spreads. These farms are a lot bigger. It used to be a farmer would have a few hundred chickens. Now um, these really, really big poultry farms or really, really big hog farms um, will have, you know, multiples of that, thousands. And so um, it's important in probably increasing the risk and making it harder to manage. The USDA says the avian flu spreads through the air, soil, feces, or farm-to-farm -farm equipment. They also say that it's very likely wild birds may carry the virus with them when they migrate to the south in the fall. Mini donuts, cheese curds, and fried apple pie. Many are diving into the goodies at the Red River Valley Fair. But are the vendors as clean as you'd expect? We caught up with Cass County inspectors as they made their rounds through the fairgrounds. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood has this week's restaurant report card. For this week's restaurant report card, we're here at Red River Valley Fair talking all things fair food. From fried s'mores to even corn dogs, we talk to health inspectors and they say things are up to par. And I just have to make sure that they're being cooked at the proper temperature and that everything is kept clean. Tens of thousands of hungry people are heading here, creating room for error back here. It's when they get really, really busy, you know, it, it's, it's a little harder to remember you know, some of the, the details, you know, and, and keep the place clean and stuff. With just a quick wash, a little scrub, and a paper towel handy, 20 seconds is all it takes. That's how we do that. But it's only day one. I had a corn dog. You had a corn dog. While Mark Anderson, owner of Blue Loon Concessions, urges his staff to head to the sink, he says the consumers have a responsibility too. Wash your hands. That's the number one thing. Whether you're, you know, especially after you, of course, have to use the bathroom uh, after you touch stuff. As the sign next to the entrance says, "Wash your hands." In West Fargo, Christine Stanwood, Valley News Live. Well, the fair runs through this Sunday, and if you want to get your hands on some tasty treats, be sure you're washing your hands before you eat, like they said. Also, if you see a vendor violate any of the health codes, you're encouraged to speak up to the administrative staff at the fair. Also this weekend, don't forget Wheel of Fortune's coming to Fargo and you can be a contestant. The Wheelmobile event will take place during two special days of contestant searches. The event is sponsored by Shooting Star Casino and will take place at Shields Arena this weekend, July 11th and 12th. Doors open at 11 a.m. For details and rules, you can visit our website at valleynewslive.com. There's a banner at the top of our homepage. Val